facts. Now press rewind. Welcome to Brain Squeeze Reactions, myself, Mark Hector, what are we reacting to now? Uh, Tupac, 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 Tupac. <sighs> okay, it's Sunday, and Sunday means I get the opportunity to react to Tupac interviews. And the interview I put on a poll the other day, and uh, the one that we're going to be reacting to is the KMEL 1996 full interview with Sway. For those who don't know who Sway is, he's the gent that's on Shade 45, does a lot of work with Shade 45 and Eminem, um, even did the massive interview with Eminem when Kamikaze came out. Uh, so that that's amazing that I get the opportunity to hear him way back there, and I'm saying way back there in 1996, interviewing Tupac. So this is going to be crazy. Now, I know this is audio only, so I get the opportunity that I'm really going to have to fucking listen. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to see behaviors, but I'm being told that it's a really good fucking interview. So I'm excited. Now, I was trying to piece together the uh, the timing on this, because I'm sure people said not long after this, he gets shot or, or this is where he gets killed. Um, so that's going to be interesting. But the massive thing to hear on this, and it excuse me, again, I'm going by the comment section, is the plans that Tupac had in place. The plans that he was going to put forward and what he was going to do, that's what I'm looking for on this interview. So, it's Sunday. You know the score. If you're new to the channel, man, comment section is for love, it's not for hate. But what this is the opportunity to do is just to chill. Get the opportunity to chill for the next hour or so where uh, we're going to play this out and I'm going to try and dissect and make sense of what the hell's going on. I've learned a lot from the Tupac interviews about individuals. For those of you who don't know me, um, I study human behaviors and emotional awareness as part of my career. I have done that for or practicing it for eight years. I've studied teaching for 16 years and that looks at people and emotions and emotional intelligence and why people behave the way that they do so this whole journey I've gone on with Tupac Shakur has been massive for me and that is why this is the number one reaction channel for Tupac Shakur because we put the effort in the absolute effort so enough of that two minute introductions man fuck look at me I'm growing uh, so let's jump into this Tupac KMEL 1996 full interview uh, get a drink get a cup of tea it's time to fucking dive into this make sure you use the comment section as I know you always do as well for anything that you wanted to update me with or any questions that you wanted to ask based on what we dissect today. Y'all got syndicated, right? Yeah, we just got Fucking it. Fucking jumping straight into and it. And uh, we also, what we want to do, I want to do it, I'm going to ask you the same questions, but I want to do it where it can play on either show right. and it won't alienate the other. Man, so that is raw. Okay. All right, cool. <clears throat> the sound is quiet. One, two, we cool? Oh, I'll be quiet. Yes. I appreciate <laughs> you doing this, brother. No you give him the level? One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, nice. Have fun, guys. Hey, hey, hey. So, what can you know, is there anything you don't want to talk about? If it is, I'll just say it. I'll just say it. All right. Hey, yo, right now I'm chilling with Tupac. Bay Area's on right here. What's up, Pac? How you doing, brother? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? First off, I want to congratulate you on all your success, man, because I kind of watched you evolve. Yeah. And, you know, and even though, you know, I think most people from the Bay Area, even though we couldn't be a, be there by your side, we kind of felt like every episode you went through in your life that we could only see through the media, we was right there. You know, and brothers got a lot of love for you in the Bay. want to know when you're coming back for a minute. I'm coming back for sure, and I love the Bay. And everywhere I go and every episode I've been through, I always felt like I was sharing it, the good times and the bad, with the Bay. Because, you know, they, they the one, I felt like whatever I am, mm -hmm. the Bay Area has something to do with making me. So if I'm bad, then they had something to do with making me. If I'm good, then they had something to do with making me. Between the East Coast, the Bay Area, and L.A., and Baltimore, those places made me. You know what I mean? Made me who I am and what I am and mm -hmm. made me stand out. And, and I, I, I owe them everything. Not It's not like saying I got love for one block. I got love for those communities, those areas, because everything about those areas made me who I am. And the people from the little, the littlest, you know, crackhead to the biggest ballers to the mm -hmm. teachers to the principals in school to the police least that that pulled me by the arm everybody to the mamas on the block everybody they helped raise me and i appreciate it because without a family they helped me to put my family back together mm -hmm. just by all my fans making me who i am now i got a family again yeah. when i started rapping i was talking about broken homes and shit now everybody all right again you know mm -hmm. what i mean just because of my fans being behind me you know what i mean and making it more than just a fan artist thing making it more like that's our homeboy and we supporting them and, and i appreciated that going to jail and them making me number one mm -hmm. the people made me number one you know what i mean and yeah. i appreciated that and i appreciate them sticking up for me when everybody be kicking me in the in, when I'm down and everything mm -hmm. that's love and I never trade that so mm -hmm. for the Bay and Philly and all Everywhere, those areas yeah. man all those ghettos all those towns I love you and don't let this East Coast West Coast thing get to you I love y'all with mm -hmm. all my heart with everything man I do this for y'all mm -hmm. just know that if it was you you do the same thing in my position 
that's mad. T- just listening to him and how the fuck... Um, I mean, that's a lot of love. You can tell that uh, Sway was just looking for something a bit shorter than that, just just to talk about. I don't know what the Bay Area is. I don't know what it is. I, I got a local by me, which is Bay Area, so I keep fucking confusing with that. I'm pretty certain it's not Cardiff Bay. I'm 100% certain Tupac's not referring to that. Um, but just the amount of love, that was a good fucking minute or so of him literally shouting love and then the East Coast, West Coast thing as well, making it very clear that he's, he's moving on from that. It's not about that at all. Uh, I think that just shows a a lot of fucking character and that was a lot of love man fuck that was a lot of love mm-hmm. that's kc what's poppin man come back here man oh okay okay that's KC, y'all. Jodeci. Jodeci. Oh, yeah, doing a video for Jodeci. yeah we Jodeci. that's some um... oh fuck that is um ah uh... is it the toss it up one and the um oh come on come on actor you did it the other day <gasps> fucking hell um how do you want it? How, how do you want it? How do you... Oh, that's fucking fire. We're kicking in the trailer with these fools right now, and it's setting off the hook. It's setting off the hook. On a serious note, this is why I want to ask you, man, because it seemed like every time you come up, like, um, with all, each album was something that would set you back, like the incident that happened in Berkeley back in the day with the police, and then, you know, the um the, the trials you went through with the um the lady um, back east, and then um, the th- situations you're going now, when, you know, you getting caught up in the system. Them. Every time you come up, it seems like it's something bringing you back down. When when you caught up like that, what is it that goes to your mind when you know you got millions of fans out there wondering about you? That's a question. That's a fucking question. I've been waiting for someone to ask actual fucking questions, man. It, the, the Tabitha one, full of shit. The, the Gordon one, full of shit. Um, the, the TMZ one, that, that lady, you know, done a great... She had questions to ask. She was being dictated to. But the questions were full of shit. That type of question is what I'm talking about. It hurts me because... It hurts me in one way because they be looking at me like, damn, you got everything. Why are you doing this? Yeah. And in my heart, I'd be like, damn, man, y'all know I I don't want to go to jail. I'm just trying to live. You know what yeah. I mean? And on the other hand, it's like I can't really take it personal because I'm a reflection of the community. And all young black males are going through that. Young black females, young white males, you know, a lot of minorities, period, is going through that. You know what I mean? Going through trying to come up and then getting pulled back five steps and you move, make eight steps and they pull you back 18 steps. So to me, it's not personal because they all going through it. Only thing that makes it different and original with me is that people get to watch it from the beginning to end like a soap opera. You get to watch mods and with everybody else, they get to hide, you know, and go to their homes and de- Deal with it and get over it with me you see me doing it you see me deal with my greatest pains you see me get over things and go through things and you know what i mean handle my life and you've seen it everybody saw it so that's what makes it different yeah, it's like his articulation is fucking second to none and this is the reason why Tupac is such a fucking fire when it comes to me learning about the culture that he's in because he's saying it there that it's not something he can hide from he has to show it every single moment living and fucking breathing it and that and that's where you watch it in his words like a soap opera so he's not saying that I'm anything different this is exactly what's taking place on a day-to-day basis Ah, and this is the reason why I pick it. If you don't like pausing, if you don't like me talking, fuck off. Okay, it's a reaction discussion, not just a playthrough. If you're here just for a playthrough, through, then what the fuck are you here? Like your like your whole life is like an open book, you know. And after you got um, had the incident on the East Coast, getting shot. And that whole nine, what, I mean, what went through your head? I mean, I, I read a lot of stuff, and I hear a lot of stuff on, 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 on TV, but I've been inclined not to believe everything you read in the paper, you know, and, and, and the things you see on TV. You know, I mean, what went through your head as you got shot and all, you know, the whole confrontation that you had with the people that you had it with? I came front and slowed me down mm-hmm. and went through my mind was like, damn, I'm shot. You know, I, I couldn't believe I could ever get touched. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So now that's why I'm more careful and even more. Some people might say disrespectful, but I'm more cautious. You know what I mean? Because I have been shot five times. You know, I know what it feels like. It's like I'm cautious now. I'm not trying to be in that predicament. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we all have choices to make, and my choices have already been made, even if I want to change it. Mm-hmm. What I learned in jail is that I can't change. I can't you know, live a different lifestyle. This is it. This is the life that they gave me. This is the life that I made. You know how they say you made your bed and I lay in it? Mm-hmm. I tried to move. I can't move to no other bed. This is it. You know what I mean? Not for the courts, not for the parole board, not for nobody. This is what they gave me. All I'm trying to do is survive and make good out of the dirt, nasty, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Unbelievable lifestyle that they gave me. I'm just trying to make something good out of that. Mm-hmm. Just like if you try to plant something in the concrete, you know what I mean? Yeah. If it grow, 
and the, and the rose petal got all kind of scratches and marks, you're not going to say, damn, look at all the scratches and marks on the rose that grew from the concrete. You're going to be like, damn, mm -hmm. a rose grew from the concrete? The concrete yeah. Same thing with me. You know what I mean? I grew out of all this. Instead of saying, damn, he did this, he did this, just be like, damn, he grew out of that? He yeah. came out he of that? That's what they should see. You know what Fuck I mean? That's, a, that's exactly what I see because, you know, you, brother, you must be truly blessed. You know what I'm saying? You know to go through all the trials and tribulations you've been through, and still, and still, you know, you still maintain it. You Sway's got it down, and he Sway's such a good interviewer. This, this is how you fucking interview. You know, just how you're leading the conversation, and and how you're you, you're you're bringing to life what he said, and and it's almost like Sway waiting to to keep boosting him up, to keep him talking about it, not just fucking changing the sentence with. And uh, I've heard you read a book. No, fuck that man you keep him talking about shit like that you know Killing and it. even now they still coming you know you got these demons and obstacles that <laughs> just up with that? they just keep coming down <laughs> harder and harder you know I mean, every time you turn around you got somebody knocking on your door trying to take something from you right they come harder and harder and that's what kills me it's like every time i think this is it and i go all out to beat that i win or I lose and then I come into the next one, it's just worse. It's yeah. even worse. Like it's like a, a like the Twilight Zone, because it's like some evil, unstoppable shit that it just won't let me go. Mm -hmm. It's just got his hands on me and it just wanna see me fail. Yeah. And I and in my mind sometimes when I get when I'm drunk or I'm, I'm just laying down, I'll be thinking like, damn, is this true? Will I fail? Am I supposed to fail? Mm -hmm. I mean, should I just stop trying and give up? But then I'll be like, nah, hold on. That's exactly what they waiting for me to do. Is to just say this is too much, I can't take it and give up. So now it's a fun little game mm -hmm. that I I cry at sometime, I laugh at sometime, I smile, I have good times and bad times, but it's a game. It's this game of life. Do I win or do I or do I lose? I know one day they're gonna shut the game down, but I have to have as much fun and get around the board as many times as I can before it's my turn to leave. That's for real. And that's it. That's, that's crazy. We chilling with Tupac right now. We're gonna come back with some more Tupac. We just lounging in this trailer. <laughs> Me and Ellie, you know, at the set. Alright, we'll be right back. Oh, Alright. That's mad. Just what he's talking about there. About yeah, like on. taking it till the very end. Like while he's on this earth, he's gonna keep fucking destroying it, which is exactly what he did. That just blows my fucking mind. Alright man. Uh, but you know what's funny man when I be looking at what I cause I, I, I like to study, I like to watch how brothers evolve, you know. Shit, cause you know how this business is, man. Everything is pretentious. It's just like you know, it everybody like gets one opportunity, and it's how who maintains it, and then making it to another opportunity that lasts. I look at the shit you've been through, dude. You know, I, I sit and think about it. It's been career in this shit. Yeah. Shit that the next nigga. I mean, I done had problems with the IRS, the police, the <laughs> yeah. Fed, government, yeah. rape. I mean, everything Every that they end your career. Up. That's how you know somebody's trying somebody to end my career. Somebody trying to get you. You know, they, these they are not coincidences. Yeah. I mean, because. I've been on probation for shit the niggas get turned loose on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I went to jail for that year, not for rape, but for touching her ass. Sexually, mm -hmm. they couldn't even get me on shit, mm -hmm. but touching her ass. And they put you in jail for a year, and I'm, and I'm sitting there And thinking, you know, if I go to any club, every bitch in there is grabbing me and touching mm -hmm. me. And I went to jail for doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even do that. I mean, I'm saying That's in a mix of sex, you're going to touch her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This was me and her personally. But they took that, and that's and what they, they blew it out of purport. And then you know what fucked it up is how like the media and shit. I mean, you look in the papers, they paint you so bad. Because you know what I'm saying? Uh, but the they motherfuckers, they know. To stop fucking me. They, not only they know what goes on in this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like with Tyson and all that yeah. shit. You know they know what goes on. Yeah. You you know you get in these environments like this. You got women all around here. Sway you know, knows. Sway's you know? so yeah, no, fucking. Ah, I love this shit. What it was, this I is obviously I off air, yeah? I just started being outlandish and mm -hmm. bragging and shit, and they had to stop me. Mm -hmm. They had to stay away and stop me. They said the police had to be first mm -hmm. to kill me. And it just so happened that I got to get there before they got me. Mm -hmm. And then that, instead of that stopping me, it made me into a bigger star. Mm -hmm. And so they was like, oh, fuck, fuck that. We're we going to stop yeah, this nigga. So right back. after that, look at the time. Just study it. You say mm -hmm. you study two, three weeks after that, the rape charge. Because mm -hmm. they... 
fancy saying that they, they sent them out. This is what I was saying to people. I was saying to people that they were after him. And the comment section is like, nah, nah, nah. He was just mouthy in the wrong time at the wrong moment. No, people have been after him. And I'm telling you, they would have gone back and watched that 17 year old interview. They would have fucking dissected the shit out of that and gone, holy shit. We've got someone like this as part of a culture that we do not want. That we do not want mixing. Okay. And that comes from the police. That comes from the government side of things. That comes from whoever is instigating this division between white and black culture. Whoever is trying to, to divide that. Now, I, I've got to I, I got to go with what I know in terms of black and white. So there might be the Hispanic cult, culture, maybe. I don't know. I haven't even delved into that. G- give me a break if you want to throw in your, your hat into the ring as well. I'm just saying to separate any two cultures. So what they were doing there, and he knew it. He's, he's saying even off, off air as such. He's saying, I knew they were doing it. Because watch, after I put pushed back and came out flying what happened straight after that straight afterwards rape charge a rape charge where he went to prison in effect for touching someone's ass and he's saying when i go into the club i'm getting fucking touched all over but they don't get in trouble but when but when when i'm doing it with with something that's consensual and they couldn't find any any rape charges ah oh, i need i need to i need to dig into that 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 um woman's interview i have to i have to do it that interview where she came out saying that that you know he did this and that. i think it was on dj vlad I've, I've got to do it i have to see dissect and see if she's talking out of her fucking ass you know we gotta stop it i mean you gotta keep your head up mm-hmm. out the women love him mm-hmm. the dudes love him how can we stop him? what what can stop this guy mm-hmm. why don't we just say he raped one of the women that he that, that love him so much mm-hmm. and that's what they did Man, they just like you know what I'm saying, and that, that's that's bigger. That's exactly what it Think is. Think about it. If I diss this bitch, I mean, you know how the game is in Oakland in the bag. If I diss this bitch, the perfect way for her to get back at me mm-hmm. is to say he raped right me. Any of y'all? Because she can sue me. It's not just hurting me. Mm-hmm. She can sue me and make millions. It's not just like I'm saying she's jealous. She sue. Mm-hmm. She can make millions mm-hmm. if she do it right. Mm-hmm. If she gets some guys and they all plan it and I do everything I'm supposed to and do, that's she can get millions. That's, that's exactly what they did. The My co defendants to this day have never been to trial. Mm-hmm. That's mad. Did she make money? Huh? Did she make she's got that was going to be my question. Did she, she called make- her lawyer right after she left my hotel before she called the police? She called the civil suit. Oh lawyer. shit, she, she was called the lawyer? She called the police. Yes. She oh fucking knew. She fucking knew. Let's come back. Let's come back. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> You need this? This is Not incredible. Really, I just want to hear this. I really want to ask you what we'll talk with Janet. <laughs> All right. Hey, we back chilling with Tupac. This man is multimedia. Not only is he a recording artist, he's also an actor. But before we get into the acting, I, w- I want to say, um, how did you first get down with Suge Knight and Death Row? Suge, I used to always see Suge. Mm-hmm. When they did the um, soundtrack for Murder Was The Case, yeah. it was when I was going through all those legal problems. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yo, give me a song, dog." And I was like, yeah, you can get whatever you want. You know, gave him a song. And it was like the most I ever got for a soundtrack. I mean, the most I ever got for a song. It was then their album budget. I mean, I think I got like something like 200000 or 150000 for one song. And the song, they didn't even use it. But I still got paid. You know what I mean? I got paid for everything I did on the soundtrack. And I think I did like two songs or something. But, and I remember when he did it, he did it like, yo, it wasn't even like because he was jocking me. He did it because he knew I was having crazy legal problems. And I, and I was a man. He had asked me to come to death row and I was like, I ain't ready. And instead of like taking it personal, he just did that for me. And I appreciated that. So when I'm in jail and I'm sitting there, what made me do the death row thing, because I was really going to quit rapping. Mm-hmm. But then Puffy and Biggie and all of them came out in the vibe, mm-hmm. and they lied, and they twisted the facts. And all I wanted to do was end everything. Yo. Oh, yeah. All I wanted to do was end everything and walk away from shit. You know what I mean? Like how Scarface and all them niggas yeah. do. I want to get out the game. I'm trying to get out the game. They want to dirty up my memory. They want to dirty up everything I worked for. So it made me come back. Instead of quitting, it made me come back more relentless. Ah, that's fucking fire. See that cream puff? You kick off about about hit him up destroying you, and it did. You fucking waste of space, motherfucker. Um, you, you kick off about that, but you're the one that lit the fire up under his fucking ass, man. You are the one that lit that. He's saying there, I was ready to end it. Be done with rap. And then people are trying, as he said, destroy my memory. Is that what he said? Or ruin my memory? That's the reason he came out flying, man. Cream Puff never fucking saw that coming. He thought he could cuss him behind closed doors and keep it on that, or did he say vibe, I think it was, that he said. 
And then Tupac came out fucking flying. I hate P. Diddy. I fucking hate him. He is the fakest twat on this planet. Okay, it shouldn't take me with fucking years of experience of emotional awareness for anyone else to see that fake motherfucker. I saw him the other day with Janet Jackson. Oh my God, he's like a slime ball. He is just fucking pure slime. And even Janet Jackson, you could just tell. You could just tell she was like, what the fuck are you doing? I think he like kissed her hand or something. Fuck, I just want to punch him in the fucking face repeatedly he's, he's just oh, oh my god <laughs> anyway Tupac to destroy my what, what, what in fact is my comrades to destroy what what used to be my homeboys my, mm. what I work for my closest clique you know what I mean I work hard all my life as far as this music business to make it East Coast, West Coast love and make everybody feel comfortable. And I dreamed of the days when I can go to New York and be comfortable and they can come out here and be comfortable. So it's not like I'm, I'm when people say, why are you doing it in East Coast? It's not like it's, it's not silly at all, mm -hmm. but you can't disrespect the love. You can't disrespect the peace treaty. That's just like when the Indians made deals with the white dudes and they would just come and rape their women and shoot them up and then mm -hmm. leave. No, the Indians ain't going to love white people no more. They're going to want to kick up some dust until we think about it and renegotiate the term of the treaty and that's what I'm talking about that's where y'all at right now we gotta have this beef and this war and these words and these, oh. this, this dialogue until we can renegotiate the terms of the treaty I love the East Coast I'm from the East Coast but they have to understand that you can't just be saying shit about us and think that we're not gonna take it personal you can't just be calling us fakers and pretenders and non-creative motherfuckers and we can't freestyle and this and that and this and think we just gonna be like oh well, that's cool we love them because they started it hell nah we're gonna take it personal just like a kid would when his bigger brother who ain't doing shit is all of a sudden, you know, that's just yeah. like the, the the little brother making hella cash and the bigger brother's like, you owe it all to me. Mm -hmm. That's wrong, yeah. you know what I mean? Don't yeah. be mad because the little nigga's coming up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, is it, now, do you think the... That's mad, man. This is where people was telling me that he started saying some shit. Now I get what what's happening there. He's, he's basically saying on his interview that that's it now. You're fucked. And there's still people that won't believe that P. Diddy and everything that goes on be it behind this whole Tupac killing that he didn't have some influence over it. I'm not saying that Puck wasn't a dick in that moment where he where, where he lost his shit a bit, but he said he's arrogant as fuck. He said he does that. But you're telling me that when he's making statements like that and he's gonna come out and destroy people, it, it has to be influenced by that. It just has to be. Fuck. East Coast, West Coast rivalry is like both coasts, or because a lot of people think it's more bad boy death row. It is. It's not both coasts. What it is was that the East Coast, the people on the East Coast are real proud, real cultural, and real strong, just like we are on the West Coast. And so what happened was Biggie came at a time, just like what Hitler did with the Jews. Biggie came at a time when they were open to somebody saying, we're the master race, and these guys are sh nothing, and they're pretenders, and this is why we not making it in the business is because of these guys. This is why we not doing nothing, because of these guys. So the East Coast really not hating us, really not knowing nothing about us, but just listening to their supposed to be leader, you know, mm -hmm. listening to the person that was representing for them. Like, yeah, okay, well, Biggie, no, you know, he from Brooklyn, woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? And that's what happened. And so all of a sudden, people saying stuff that they didn't even know was well, what they was doing was like ending our, our culture where we started. Mm -hmm. We held it down for y'all. That's how I felt. I, I was in tears like, what? Mm -hmm. When y'all was out there on some, you and LL was, was dancing with, with women in silver suits and niggas was on some other shit, which I'm not mad at because I might do that one day. And I love them niggas, you know what I mean? But I'm saying when you was being creative and wanting to try other boundaries, we was holding it down with this hardcore shit. Yeah. It might not have been what you wanted, but it kept rap alive for years. It kept money coming in. It let them notice us. So how could you look at us now and be like, this ain't good enough? You know what I mean? We the broken home. Y'all ain't teach us this. We ain't come from where you, we ain't got no subways or graffiti. We learned this, I mean, in spite of the gangs, in spite of all of that, we came up with this culture. You know what I mean? So I felt like we never got what we deserved. And I took it personal because I'm from the East Coast and I know about that culture, but I know about this culture because I was here when it was being put down. So now I'm doing what the East Coast would have did if the West Coast did this to the East Coast. I'm riding for my side. You know what I mean? You wrong. This is not right. Recognize us. And
That's fucking crazy what he's saying there. He's saying, well, you were off trying new shit and referring to LL Cool J and just, just trying different things. He was still in, 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 in the hood, excuse me saying that. I'm, I make it sound fucking stupid, but he was still cutting that old school stuff is what he's saying. That real grit, storytelling, reality of the situation. Not out in the party and bullshit type of stuff. He's saying he was still pulling together that real reality, that, that, that cultural journey. That, that that people people knew was taking place around them in, in the real world. Not in fucking fairyland where you've got $100 million. In the fucking reality of the cultural situation, he was still digging up that. That's what he's saying. And, and he was still producing that and talking about it, making sure that people heard it. What he wasn't doing was faking behind a few lights, like he said, wearing silver suits and what have you. He's not insulting that because he's saying, I even said, I'll, I'll do that as well. But don't fucking start attacking him because so he was still doing that reality of what it's like to be living in that world. Fuck, man. This dude is phenomenal. Ah, oh, and this is the thing. I don't think people will listen to me all the way through. They can't. We're 15 minutes in. I'm 25 minutes. And the only way the East Coast going to recognize us is for us to do it on records, by money, by sales, and by representing it. Just like KRS-One. When PM Dog got on stage and he had talk shit about him, what did KRS-One do? So why are people telling me I'm wrong for doing what I'm doing? KRS they love KRS-One. He is hip-hop. Am I correct? That's true. Right. So I'm hip-hop. I'm mad at Biggie, I'm rushing the nigga. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> That's if real. East Coast separate themselves from Biggie. We'll do shows in the East Coast. Everything is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But so far, the East Coast has been with every all interviews I read, every letter I read. Niggas is like, fuck two Bob, Biggie, Biggie this, Biggie, Biggie. Like, wow. like he's representative of the East Coast. So that's why I attack as though I do, because I'm a general, and I'm a smart general. And I'm not going to attack at no blind soldiers. I'm going to attack at those attacking me. Mm -hmm. Only reason people was mad now is because I came out of jail and made this shit a reality. Mm -hmm. When I got out of jail, the West Coast, East Coast shit was really started. Mm -hmm. California love, what I was saying, put it down. Mm -hmm. And now them niggas is mad because money is fucked up. Attitudes have changed. It's not as safe as it used to be. Niggas got to think about their business steps, and that's what I wanted to happen. Now let's go to the table. Let's talk. Let's make peace. Let's work it out. Let's get a community to money. So you saying with a conversation Set with guys like Puffy, Biggie, and that whole East Coast. Sit down and conversate with Puffy or Biggie because that's like Scarface sitting down with the dude he overthrew. You know what I mean? They not on my level, but I can sit down with the OGs from there, which we are doing. People don't even know we not beefing with the East Coast. We starting Death Row East. With Eric B, all the OG niggas out there from the East Coast, we got Kane, Christopher Williams, all these artists, we're trying to get Bobby Brown, all these artists, we're trying to put the East Coast death row just like the West Coast death row and make it major. You know what I mean? Big, right, but we're not doing that until we get this business settled. And even while we're doing that, we're trying to get the Wu-Tang niggas, because I love them niggas. I feel as though they represent the East Coast how we represent the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And I love them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Tupac. that's what we trying to do. We not we we doing it like if we, if everybody raps is what they really think, then everybody should understand what I'm doing because it's gangster shit number one, it's war shit number two, and it's all by the rules of the game. You know what I mean? I'm doing shit. I'm calling for dialogue. I'm, I'm He's creating a fucking army. That's what he's talking about. And these aren't small names. Um, I heard Bobby Brown in there. Probably not a great... Is Bobby Brown the one that uh, uh, beat up Tina Turner? Or am I being fucking stupid with that? Uh, comment section if I've really fucked that up. Uh, but he's saying Wu-Tang as part of Death Row East... You know, Wu-Tang are massive in this era. Fucking humongous. And the fact that he's saying dialogue like that and saying, I want to talk to these people. I want to talk to East Coast. But then on the back of that, saying to P. Diddy and Biggie, like, nah, that, that's like Scarface trying to make friends with that dude that, that was trying to fuck him over. Fuck that shit. I'm not interested in that. And he's, then he's like, they're below me. They're nothing. And people still think that P. Diddy and, and, and his fucking motley crew have no influence over for him passing away, have no influence in him being shot. Are you fucking stupid? Are you fucking so demented that, that you can't listen? If you're business minded and you're trying to take over the rap industry, if you're business minded and you, you know what, what's going to work and what isn't, you've got Tupac who you've tried to destroy through, through police, through government and every 
time. Pop, 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 pop. And he's coming back. And he's and it's, every time he comes back, he comes back stronger. You shoot this motherfucker and he'll release a song that fucking sells a fuck ton. Okay? And, and you're now struggling. And he's saying, I'm coming to East Coast. I've got no problem. Ah, oh, it's all makes fucking sense. I'm coming to East Coast. I've got no fucking problem with them. Okay? I want to take all the OGs. I want to take all the OGs. And I want to take all the fucking good rappers that are making part of Death Row East. This man is building fucking empires, okay? Other businesses would have fucking seen that and gone, uh-uh, this is not good. He is getting better, more loved, he's more articulate, he's a better rapper, he's more influential, he's been through more shit, he's still representing, like he said, it's, it's the culture first, the hip-hop culture first, so he's still representing that. Why P. Diddy and, and Biggie are doing all fucking party songs and all them bullshit tracks. He's saying that I'm, I'm doing hip-hop first and I'm building an empire. There would be a respect like no other. Wu Tang would be looking at that and going, "Yeah, I'd rather that. I don't want this fucking this fake money making bullshit in the videos that we're making and the songs that we're writing. I want that real fucking deep written storytelling cultural shit that educates people what's really fucking happening." Fuck! I'm gathering attention for dialogue, which is what you do in the struggle for power. <sighs> that's real. That's real. We still chilling with two pockets intense. I love this, brother. I like this, my man keeping it real. We're going to come back with more Tupac I love right here. I love Sway. I want to ask him, hold up, one more thing. Uh, double up, man. man, is that so profound what you're saying? But it's real, huh? It's real. It's so real. I never hey, thought about it. Hey, but it's realer it's, than it's what so brothers... It's so profound. They, see, people think it's, it's realer than what they think. People you know? think I just got out of jail and was like, just because I got shot on the East Coast, I'm like, fuck the East Coast. Yeah, you know, no. half the rappers from the East Coast was there when I got shot. Nobody knew a thing. That's just like you come into the hood and the police ask them what happened. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, I don't know. You know they lying. Mm -hmm. And all I was doing was like, give me my proper etiquette. Mm -hmm. If Biggie was out here on the West Coast, he was in the studio with me and we homeboys and he got shot. Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't tell him who did it, but he would want, I wouldn't go ride on niggas who did it, but he would want to know who did it. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, look, man, these niggas from Watts did it. Wound, this is why they want to talk to you. When, when, when. That's how I do it. Just like when the niggas from the 60s wanted to get a trench. I went to them personally and talked to them. Mm -hmm. I do it by the rules of etiquette. So I got shot. I'm like, yo, what happened? Come see me in jail. Biggie all in the air to my ear pockets, my homeboy wound, but not seeing me. My old boy Stretch is going to Biggie's concerts. Niggas is like abandoning me. But all in the air and on TV, they like, yeah, pop, rest, you know, keep the struggle on. I was like, yo, I'm starting to turn into like Slick Rick. Mm -hmm. Niggas is just going to act like I'm going to just be in jail and they're going to give me shout outs and try to take my position. Mm -hmm. And if you watch, that's what Biggie did. Listen to his, I, I, I was there and the guy trained the nigga he used to be under me like my lieutenant. The nigga, I used to come in New York, I used to do shows and let the nigga come on before I did keep your head up and get around. Because mm -hmm. nobody knew the nigga in New York. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell a nigga, yo, if you hey, want to you know make your money, I'm, I'm, you got to rap for the bitches. Do not rap for the niggas. Yeah, I told a yeah, nigga, yeah. don't rap for the niggas. Rap for the problem. bitches. The bitches will buy your records and the niggas want what the bitches want. So all of a sudden, he changed from being, listen to party and bullshit. Listen to his style. He changed from that to Big Pop. Yeah. Because of me. He had my album, Me Against the oh. World, was the second one. He had the Fuck. first one. I changed everything because Ready to Die came oh, out. There's so much going on in my head now. Fucking business mind again. P. Diddy and Biggie listening to this nobody would want to hear this okay where he's saying i influence your change around and not just like by saying i did it hearsay he's saying listen party and bullshit bollocks to then changing it around and not now you're suddenly this hardcore fucking storytelling rapper he's like no i helped you with that dickhead i helped you get that and now i'm gonna take it away from you that's what he's saying i helped you as quick as i helped you did that is as quick as I can take it away. That is what he's fucking saying there. Fuck! I get now what, why you wanted me to listen to this. I fucking get it. And people saying I don't understand. I'm getting comment sections saying I don't understand. You don't fucking understand, dickhead. Okay? I, I wasn't even around when this is here. I'm picking up pieces as I'm going along. But the difference is I'm fucking listening. I'm actually listening and I'm piecing together through education. I get what he's saying. He's going to take over the East Coast. But his question is, how comes nobody knew anything? Every rapper from the East Coast, and he got shot in the East Coast, and he's saying if he was there, he would be out and finding out this information. He could get that information. If someone else got shot, yeah, he wouldn't He wouldn't rat out to the police, but he damn well helped people find out. But nobody knows anything. 
throughout the whole of the East Coast. Now, there's two things, two things that could be. It could be that you have zero fucking influence, zero influence. So the fact that they couldn't get it, maybe Puck's given them too much credit. Maybe Tupac has given them too much credit to think that they that they would have influence, that they would be like him, that they'd know every nook and cranny of their whole fucking city life. I think maybe that could be it. Maybe Tupac assumed that they would know this stuff, not actually knowing that they're weak as fuck and they barely know further than their own fucking noses. Or B, they're fucking hiding something and it's fear. It's fear that, that that's getting Tupac shot in that moment. Fuck! And it sounded like my album. Mm -hmm. it sounded like All my album. album was about, you know, dealing with death. Mm -hmm. And then he came out ready to die and I had to switch it. Wow. That's why it was less East Coast rap, East Coast beats, because Biggie had just took my shit. That's what, but you can listen to it. That's what, that, that was his success too, because he took like listen. West Coast sound. We flipped and, it. And I slang. told him that. I told you know, him that. I trained. He was supposed to be, he was supposed to be thug life. Mm -hmm. All while he was coming up, I used to let him come on stage with me. He was screaming thug life. Hey, cause I saw he was like, I hate Canadian. Brooklyn, he I hate me. I'm out with them niggas puppy cheating me. Woo, woo, woo. All of a sudden he blew up and he wasn't saying thug life. Mm -hmm. So I started getting mad and I was seeing the niggas place. He was hugging me, yo, Pop. Yo, thank you. He was the only nigga that woo, woo, woo. But he, and then he told me like about a week before I got shot. He knew the nigga that was shot me. And he was like, Pop, don't hang around this nigga. You know me, you know, we walked in with the nigga that shot me. I ended up shooting me. He's like, Pop, don't fuck with this nigga. Cause I knew the nigga too. He was my mm -hmm. coach. And uh, I was like, what you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later. And we didn't talk. And the next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to come see you. No, nigga, what happened? While I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know? Biggie homeboy shot you. Because they bragging. They telling they niggas in jail. Yo, we just got pot. Woo. And my cousin was in jail in New York because I got family out there. Mm -hmm. He's sitting right there while the niggas get in the car going, yo, my homeboys just jacked that nigga Tupac. So that's how I knew, shot me, what happened and everything. They mad because I know what happened. That's why they all, you know, that's it's big they enough, they're not rotten. Mm -hmm. That's why what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. I'm destroying them. Mm -hmm. I fucked his wife. I'm fucking them in the game. I'm destroying them. He lives by the rules of the game. He lives off a mafia image. I'm bringing him so he, he totally disregarded the rules of the game and he's everything but a mafia nigga. Mm -hmm. You're reinventing it. Right, I'm showing him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, if anybody's a mafia yeah. nigga, me nigga. I fucked your bitch, I took five shots, I went your crew. <laughs> I mean, I just what? Mm -hmm. I went to New York. They don't do shows out here. I went, I did Saturday Night Live, y'all forgot. Live <laughs> in New York where everybody knew I was gonna be there on stage, no problems. Went to the clubs, everything. In the middle with my West Side ride. You know what I mean? Because I'm real about it. I don't hate New York, but if y'all don't understand it, then fuck it. You get rolled over too. Because I hear y'all. I was in jail and I heard what they were saying on the radios. You know how we got the Wake Up Show? Shit. Right, yeah, you know they yeah, got yeah, their yeah. own shows. They got their little mixed shows with Red Alert and this nigga and that nigga and, and um, what's his name? Um, Flex. And I swear to God, dog, they used to diss the West Coast. They had these commercials where they'd be like, hey, dog, what's up, dog? And I used to be like, in jail in New York on my radio, like, oh, shit. <laughs> You know how you would feel if you yeah. heard your homeboy oh. went home and just clowned you? And I was like, oh, man. Oh, and all my homeboys like, yo, puppy just did a show out here. I was like, how was it? It's like, good, we gave him love, we gave him this, we gave him that. He was talking all this unity shit. But then when they go home, they be popping. Q-Tip, they made all these underground tapes dissing us. Q-Tip? Yes, Q-Tip. Q-Tip me on some So shit. then when niggas ride back, then they want to talk about the culture and be hip hop and shit again. But that's not fair. Mm -hmm. How you gonna be bold? And that's what they all do. They all play badasses. Same thing for the Fuji's. They just diss me on, on the air on MTV. Fuji's diss you? They're not personally diss the West Coast. They just introduced my video as like California love. The East Side is the best side. Oh, I see them. All them niggas was talking about how much they respect me and love me. See, I hate that. Because I be they, dead serious. They, they, it's one thing when they say that. Now she know XL is talking about me. He got a rhyme, or you know how he always got these little metaphors. He say, you'll get fucked like Tupac did in jail. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling y'all beforehand, off the air, I'm gonna beat this nigga's ass. And no, everybody's gonna be talking about how wrong I am, how I haven't changed, but what am I supposed to do with a nigga disrespecting my manhood like that? 
damn straight. And this is the thing that's fucking me off when people were saying about him, like, you know, he brought it on himself and he shouldn't have done this and he shouldn't have done that. He's a man at the end of the day with principles and morals. And he's being fucking pulled apart left, right and centre. Being told that things are happening that are not happening. People lying around him, two-faced around him. Everyone surrounding him wanted to take something from him. So why wouldn't he come out flying and punching? Fucking hell. See what I, I mean? It's like yeah, I can't yeah. get out the game. Just yeah, like I'm yeah. saying, just like Scarface and that, because Carlito's way, I want to be legit. I've got, we got restaurants coming up with Alanis Morissette, me, Snoop, Sugar, and Alanis nice. Morissette open up a restaurant. Alanis is nice. I'm doing a soundtrack, cool. my first soundtrack. I'm the music supervisor for this movie I'm doing. Woo! I got Alanis on there, Michelle, Inkalacia, whatever her name. <laughs> all these, yeah, all these she alternative nice stars, new rap. All this shit coming up, but what's going to reign supreme in 96 and 97 is the ride I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like, I feel like I'm doing it for hip-hop. All I'm trying to do is get the imposters out. I remember Biggie sleeping on my couch. I remember begging bitches to fuck him. <laughs> oh! You feel me? Yeah. So, <laughs> Big Papa don't mean nothing to me. He know it. He know it. That's why he can't fight me. That's why he can't battle me. Yeah. I, I'm going to be listening, like, Biggie Smalls, for me, I, I don't think I fucked with hardly any. I remember Ten Crack Commandments is in my head. Um, I think I know Party and Bullshit. I know there was a song that, that was a, a newer track where it had uh, people rapping on it. Ah, ah, this is going to escape me. So may maybe a couple. I know there was the Eminem, Dead Wrong as well on there. But now... If I dig into Biggie and a couple of you are like, oh, you need to dig into Biggie and you need to dig into Biggie. Clearly, those people saying that haven't heard this. Haven't heard this. Where now I'm going to be listening to that going, this is fake bullshit. I've heard 100 plus Tupac tracks in the space of six weeks. In the space of six weeks, I have I have dedicated the channel to Tupac at the heart of the channel. Okay? So trust me when I say I have listened and I pause and I rewind. You're talking 18 to 20 minute videos, if not longer than that. Okay? That's the effort that I put in over an hour's worth dissecting shit like this. Okay? So don't tell me that I haven't been digging in. So Biggie's going to have to come with something heavy and interviews galore that try and dig himself out of the educated hole that I have now taken from listening to Tupac because all the planets are aligning all the planets are aligning with what he's talking about man you know what I mean but I can make know, songs you know, talking you exactly know, about him and he yeah. can't talk about me because he know, he know I'm know the one that used to color. buy him champagne all that shit he talking yeah. that was me buying him that he talking about my lifestyle his album because when he was doing his album he was broke nigga I was having money I, the, the shit he talked about was my life Thug life That's what he talking about All that junior mafia Them niggas was Young motherfuckers That used to hang around That I used to give money to To get on a train To go home At night Little season and all of them And Kim and all that Yeah so now they rapping Against me And you can imagine How I fucking feel mm -hmm. When, when I got arrested you, in New York I got arrested for Biggie Them guns in my room Was Biggie's guns Cause them cowards Left the room When they heard the police Was downstairs And everybody left Their guns in my room So I got four guns In my room Serial numbers scratched out, and I did not since I took that case. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how I feel when I'm in jail for that case. And he out there living a mafia lifestyle, giving me no money, giving me no respect, giving me no tribute. Rolling with my road dog who was there when I got shot. I mean, come on, man. I'm not paranoid. Mm -hmm. I'm not paranoid. Nah, nah. Y'all niggas stretch, know what time yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what it is is that the East Coast drug dealers got them niggas under extortion. I came and fucked up everything. Cause I dissed the niggas in the Daily News, they put a hit out on me. When the niggas tried to rob me, which is all they wanted to do, I knew what they told me. That's what they was telling me. Pop, they were sending me messages through my closest road dog saying, Pop, why did you fight them? They was just coming to take your shit. But I wasn't letting nobody take my shit, and I was strapped that day. That's what was, I couldn't put in the bar. I had two, two double glocks on me. And when I pulled for my shit, that's when I got shot. And the reason I knew my homeboys set me up is because my homeboys knew I was strapped. The dudes came straight for me. My homeboys is behind the niggas. Like, they running for the swag. My homeboys behind the niggas, and they didn't do nothing. They knew I was strapped. All they had to do was grab the nigga, and I could have bust. But they got guns, so these niggas are coming for me, and these niggas just sitting there. And they say, get, and these niggas drop to the floor. I knew it was a setup.
nobody come downstairs to act them shot. And then after you shot, now how did we after you shot, you went up there, they looked at you like you was a ghost? Yo, when I walked up stand sway on everything I love. I seen it in their eyes. I can never describe this look, but to you get shot and you see it yourself. Mm -hmm. Niggas looked at me like this. I walked out the elevator, because I walked out the elevator, I didn't know I was shot in my head or nothing. I, I wasn't, they said in the vibe interview, I was acting like I was in a movie. Mm -hmm. What they really trying to say is this nigga is raw. Mm -hmm. I got shot five times, came upstairs, did not know I had got shot five times, so I only got shot once. Man, dude, it sound like you got a lot on your chest. Oh my God. <laughs> It's been so long since the Bay's heard from you. And I mean, that's why I'm giving it to you. you straight raw because you got to go back mm -hmm. and tell them the shit that we ain't recording. I'm giving you that, you know, not to tell them the specifics, but you but know when somebody calls you and goes, yeah. yo, why did you do this? You know, they go, trust me. We talk to them, we know, mm -hmm. blam, blam, blam. Now y'all know, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Just like they niggas on their radio stations know. Because mm -hmm. what I was mad at is that we didn't have a radio station like that. Me and Snoop got an okay from 92.3 to start West Side Radio. Mm -hmm. But I, didn't, I, I don't want to do it unless it's right. What I really just wanted, I was just proving the point again. I want our radio stations to be true to us, and we'll be true to y'all. Tell us. Nigga, you know, you know if you what? want that type of love, you better give us some commercials every week. We want new shit like they do on the East Coast. Uh, you know we what want happened. new songs, especially you, for us. Did you get the copies of the West Side Radio yeah, I, I gave you? What do you think? Like, I love it. But that's cool. what I was talking about. That's why yeah. now it's not such an important thing for us to do it personally because somebody is doing it. Yeah. But that's yeah. all I wanted was for somebody to have a we show like that. Because I'm from now. New York and yeah. I know how they shows is. They dope. Everybody loves it. I love the fact that Sway was trying his hardest to, and I get I get why he was doing it. This is this isn't an attack on Sway. Exactly what I would be doing. Sway was trying to get in there to go. That's what I'm trying to do, Puck. You know, that's that's what I'm trying to do. He's he's trying to say that like like you can have my fucking platform. Now the interesting thing about this is that Tupac made a comment there. Maybe I miss it, misheard it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he said something about um, that's why I'm telling you this stuff off camera. I think he said or or. Or off, off mic, which is what's taking place here. This isn't the official recording because the mics that they're slightly further away, so it's obviously a conversation taking place. And he said, "I'm telling you this off," but there's something inside me now which is thinking, "Fuck! Did someone else get wind of this interview?" It's not Sway, absolutely not. It, it, it just can't be. You can just hear his voice. It wouldn't be. It's a physical impossibility. Nothing would make sense by him doing that whatsoever. And you can just listen. You can just hear. It's it's uh, it's it's all about the uh, the the the. Pitch and pace and the personality that's coming through his voice even that empathetic side when he's listening to Tupac and he's engaging with him that that's pure belief that's pure love that's coming out of him but maybe some some of those backstory moments from K KMEL it got released somewhere and someone fucking heard this and I'm saying it's a business and it's Scarface, and it's brutal. He said it himself. And this is a man that is creating a fucking empire. I know you gotta do your thing. Well, hold on, I wanna ask you one more question about that, bro. All right. Yo, we, we back we back right here with Tupac. You now know, just spot. chopping up, chopping up a little bit. We, uh, can't let you hear everything, you know? <laughs> Some I'll stuff. Put it down, yeah, yeah, yeah. My man definitely putting it down. One more thing about Death Row. What, now, how does the, um, what's going on with Dre, and how does that affect Death Row as a whole? No, hold on. Dre's doing his own thing. It don't affect us. My uh, take on what happened was that Snoop was on trial for murder, fighting for his life. To, somebody had said that Dre was in the car. The, the jury believed that. We needed Dre to be there to say he wasn't there. And once they would have saw him, they would have known he wasn't there. And that would have saved Snoop's whole case. Because they would have saw that the, the witness that had said it was lying. And Dre never showed up. He was too busy. That's how they told me. When they told me that, I was like, well, no matter how dope he is, and Dre's one of my heroes in the music business, but I was like, no matter how dope he is, if you're not down for his homeboy, Snoop, who brought him back when he was just a relic, when niggas was dissing him, you know what I mean? Then I don't want to be a part of him. I don't want to be around him or nothing. Yeah. Plus, I feel as though what's done in the dark will come to light. It's secrets that everybody's going to find out about that I don't have to play a hater dry snitch about. That will come out and you'll find out for yourself and you'll know why I did it. I swear to God, y'all, I'm living by the rules of the game that y'all, the this people, dude. have put down for us to live by. Oh, that's real. Let's talk about other... That is fucking real what he's saying there, man. And that that's a straight perfect reason. 
you know, if he feels that, that, that Dre didn't do what he should have done, and he's saying he lives and breathes by this code. He lives and breathes by that. And he's saying, no matter how good you are, and Dre, one of the best producers, arguably on the planet at times, at times, before you start kicking off. Uh, Alchemist, for me, is one of my favorites uh, ever. Um, I just think he makes fucking perfect beats. But what I'm saying is, is that he's saying, I don't care how massive you are. I don't care how close you've been with me. You start fucking up the coat, that's it. You're finished. And, and I think it just shows his fucking morals, man. There's so much in this interview. Think who would be listening to this. Even Dre to an extent. Even Dre to an extent. Fuck, that would be a turn up, wouldn't it? That would be a twist and a fucking tail if it turns out it was fucking Dre all along. Things like you told us you got a soundtrack you working on, you got a new movie, right? Why don't you talk on that? We got a movie called Gridlock coming out. It's like a mainstream movie. It's me coming back into the theaters with uh, Tim Roth from Pulp Fiction and a gang of other movies. I don't know who the female is, but it's a big name female. I'm the music supervisor for the... <laughs> I don't know who the female is, but it's a big name female. Now, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, someone correct me if I'm wrong here. That female, um, again, you should see the same screen that I'm looking at. That female there, is she, is she English? Is she? Was she in Mission Impossible Two, and she was uh, Tom Cruise's missus? I think just her face is recognised. If if I'm wrong, then I'm sorry, but I do not like her as an actress. Mission Impossible Two is one of my fucking favourite films. Okay, one of many, but it excites me. My most favourite part, if you haven't seen it, he takes off the mask and it turns out that um, it's not Tom Cruise or whatever the fuck it is and you see him running away and then the music kicks in and like climbing the mountains and all this shit and on the motorbikes and blah blah blah. I loved it. As a kid I watched that and I was fucking in awe. What I wasn't in awe of is that fucking woman that's <laughs> in that film because she's just a terrible actress. She's terrible and it just looks like her so I'm hoping in this film she's better but Tim Roth is a fucking legend. I need to watch some, watch some Tupac films. I have to. I have to. Soundtrack is my first chance ever doing something like this. We got a line of Morris set on the soundtrack, all these big name alternative, supposedly people who I would never get with. I got them all on the soundtrack to show just like what kind of range I got. Nice. And I'm putting that kind of soundtrack out, and then I'm putting a rap soundtrack out, and I'm gonna do it like a Tupac album, basically, with me doing a whole bunch of solo songs, a Snoop on there, doing some songs, Doll Pound, Death Row on there. Just to show that, you know, I got a business mind as well as a creative mind, and to show Amazing. that I also have, you know, besides just rapping, I can do other I can make my, 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 my way in other ways in this business that's for that's for real too uh now when you work with janet you know i was wondering if maybe you could hook me up with her number if you uh did you pursue it <laughs> so, on everything i love if anybody find janet tell her i'm looking for that's why i said that shit in my song when my mind's made up forgive me janet because i feel like she got a shit all twisted people that made her my enemy she ain't my enemy uh -huh. i ain't mad at her you know what i mean but i want to know that you know it ain't even like that you know she met me at a time of my life when i was real immature i was coming up going through a lot you know now she probably see me in a whole different light maybe not maybe she would but i want that opportunity so when i see janet i'm gonna try to make right what we made wrong all right <laughs> well, i'll be right there with you bro yeah, <laughs> Hey, now, I'm gonna ask you another question. It. Five years from now, where do you see yourself five to ten years from now? What what quick, this is what, remember on the Gordon one, where I was saying, speak to him about his future. I said those fucking words, and, and with fucking Tabitha, I'm saying, why isn't anyone asking him what, what the future holds for Tupac, what his, what his goal is? Sway is down, man. Sway knows what to ask, man. Fuck. This is the best interview. This is the best interview. And unfortunately, it would be the one where it was so good that it gave you every part of Tupac's business mind and what he's got planned and how he's going to take over as an empire. I, I see now what people were saying. This is going to be his demise. And then from this, this triggers the backstory. Go back. Look at all the stuff. Then you've got fucking government involved. You've got police involved. You've got fucking cream puff involved as well. What do you see yourself? What do you see yourself doing? I see myself having a job on death row, owning stock at death row, being an A&R person, an artist that could drop an album like Paul McCartney every five years. You know, not even like Paul McCartney, but there's no rapper who ever did it, so I have no one to use to say like. But, you know, that type of thing where I could just do it at leisure. And, you know, when my music will mean something and I drop deeper shit. That, um... I have my own production company, which I'm close to right now, doing my own movies, have my own restaurant, which I got right now, with Alanis and Suge and Snoop, 
um, and just expand. I'm starting to put out some calendars. I got a uh, publishing company and put out some calendars for charity. I'm going to start a little youth league in California so we can start playing some East Coast teams and some Southern teams and some, you know, uh, mid Midwest teams, you know, have like a little little league, like a Pop Warner league, but the rappers fund it. And the rappers are the, the head coaches, you know what I mean? Have a league where you could get a big trophy with diamonds in it for a nigga to stay drug free and stay in school and that's the only way you could be on the team. And we had fun and eat pizza and had to find his girls there and throw concerts at the end of the, you know what I mean? That's what I mean by giving back, you know what I mean? Not, not, not being who I am, but by using what I got to give back, to give back. And in closing, you know, you got a lot of people, fans that's listening to you right now, that don't really get a chance to uh, talk to Tupac up and close and personal like we like we kicked it today but if it's anything you want people to know about Tupac what is it you like to say Fucking number one question. when I diss y'all meaning this I mean like when you come up to me and I'm not giving you the kind of reaction that you think I should be giving you it's not because I'm ungrateful it's because I'm nervous I'm paranoid I just got out of jail I've been shot I've been cheated and lied and framed and I just don't know how to deal with so many people giving me that much affection I've never had that in my life so if I do do that, don't take it personal, try to understand me and see it for what it is. Now I understand what it's truly like to be like, not that I'm a fine ass nigga, but I understand what it's like to be a fine female going to the club and all the guys just rush you before you ready to be rushed. You know what I mean? And everybody's touching you before you ready to be touched. So now I have a better understanding of what it's like to be a woman, but I also have a better understanding on fans not making me do things. I'm going to do it because I love y'all, because I do appreciate what you did, but when you make me do it, I don't want to do it. I don't care. I'm many albums you bought. You know what I mean? My fans to me are people who follow me and is down for me, understand me, and no matter what people say, they know me because they know my actions. They follow me through my career. Not people who just bought my album because anybody, I buy albums all the time, but I just buy it to listen to. You know what I mean? And if you buy my album, you bought it for the music. You didn't buy it for when you see me. I just break down and start eating you out. You know what I mean? So don't, I don't like that. Don't start, you know, extorting me for your well, autograph and shit. You know what I mean? I'm real. I give autographs when I want to. Not because I'm all that, but because I'm tired. And I, I, don't, I want to be in this game for a long time. I don't ever want to hate the fans. And that's what these other niggas do. See, they might give you autographs all the time, but they hate you. And they don't even look at you like people. I do look at you like people. That's why I feel as though I can look you in your eye and go, yo, I don't feel like doing that right now. I don't feel like signing the autographs. And you should understand. Because I'm looking at you like a human being. Let's kick it. Let's not take pictures. Let's just kick it. Do that. I want some females to do that. Just come up to me and be like, pop, look. Because every female want to come up to me and be like, I know you think I'm like everybody else. And, and treat me bad and tell me no. Be the opposite way. Everybody doing that. Everybody trying to show me how much they not attracted to me. Do the opposite. Because, you know, these ghetto girls, these minority women is what I call them. Them the only women I could get. Everybody else scared of me. Their parents are telling them not to mess with me. So y'all can't fade me. Y'all can't turn on me. Don't change on me. Stay down for me because I stay down for you. And don't extort me and let's just do it forever. That's fucking mad what he's saying there. In, in an educated way, he's just saying treat me like a fucking human being. Treat me like a person that is just a fucking person. You know, ah, the extorting word he's, he's used a lot. So he obviously feels that people have taken stuff from him. That That's what he feels. And I don't think that's just solely down that he's talking about fans. I think in general, think about everything he's gone through. He's used that word extortion a lot, which basically means people have used his name and they've robbed him. And they've robbed him of his life by sending him to prison, by using his name, almost his career, his his ability, the fact he wants to influence not just a culture, but a fucking communities within the cultures as well. With all those ideas from restaurants to fucking little leagues to, 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 to people who are ex-alcoholic drug takers who are now winning trophies and changing their life and stuff like that. That's massive. And on top of that, making films, he, he gave the Paul McCartney comment as well. You know, but he said, I can't, I can't think of any other name. So we can only use Paul McCartney because there isn't someone that like him is what he's saying. And, and he's fucking true with that. There isn't anyone like him. Ah, oh, favorite rapper ever. Tupac. Well, Tupac Shakur kicking on a set right here. Want to ask about the new two projects you have coming out. Can you ask a little bit about that? Like the new single, okay. like the videos. Okay. Because yeah. a lot of people, you got a big marketing plan yeah. coming out with that. Yeah. And then we'll edit that in. Okay. All right. Well, you want me to ask him like, you know, this project he's doing with Jodeci. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. 
Hey, hey, Pac, why don't you talk about the project you're doing with Jodeci right now? How do you want it? That's My the next one? single is going to be How Do You Want It, America's Most Wanted, Hit Em Up, and California Love, the version that people never g- could buy. Hit em, hit em up, How Do You Want It, California Love. That's what he's talking about, the next ones that are coming up. Okay? Now, thank fuck I've reacted to all of them. Yeah, hit them up. I've done California Love. I did the live version. That's why it's confusing me. Um, and and the How Do You Want It. I mean, that's what he's got coming up. Them free fucking belters. Ah. Oh. You know what I mean? And Hit Em Up is the song which is a classic hip-hop record, meaning a straight battle record to all the bad boy staff. You know what I mean? From Puffy to Biggie to Lil' Kim, all of them. Lil' Kim, and they, inflated heads. And them too, because they've been, they been talking a lot of shit, and I got them. I got songs to them. I got this song called um, When We Ride On Our Enemies, mm-hmm. and I'll be that? like, um, uh, Nigga, you barely living. Don't you got sickle, sickle cells? cells? See me have a seizure on stage. <laughs> stage. You, you ain't, ain't living well. well. Hey, living well. How many niggas want to be involved? involved? See, I was I'm only talking, talking to Biggie, Biggie but, but I'll, I'll kill, kill all of y'all. Then ball. And that's the truest shit I've ever had closed. written because uh, these niggas in my deep as little kids. When I was in jail, when they came out with that song, where they was like, Thug Life, we still living it. You know, when that song, um, that they had, they were talking about, yeah, they was like, Thug Life, we still live. I took it as a diss. So from jail, I'm calling my little homies in Atlanta, like, yo, they got a show out there. Get with them busters. So my homeboys rolled them niggas like, what's up? The niggas was cowards. In the car, like, looking forward, like, they didn't see my homeboys going, Thug Life, motherfucker, what's poppin'? You know what I mean? So I hate niggas like that. And these are some young busters who's getting souped up by their block to come up against a motherfucker they don't even know. Mob D, you know, like I know, I swallow them. Now, if this was somebody I couldn't fuck with, I'd tell you. But Mob D, I swallow them niggas. I'm swallowing. I have a train on them niggas, you know what I mean? One of them niggas got sickle cell. He barely breathing. He don't even want to see me. He'll have a fucking seizure. They both That's weigh so like 100 pounds. They don't want my little homies is attacking them. That's why I ain't even addressing the mob deep issue because they not even on my level. I find it disrespectful that they even think they can attack me or the West Coast. So I don't even address them little buster ass babies. Right. And please print that because it is please on and popping. And when I say it's on and popping, I mean when I see the niggas in the spot, it's on and popping. I'm not one of them fake diss record writing motherfuckers. Only time I won't rush a motherfucker is because he straight up told me he got respect for me. He don't want no drama because I ain't no bully. I'm not just going to beat no motherfucker up because the crowd want to see it. You know what mm. I mean? If you don't see me rushing them, that means because they bow down. And then a Mob Deep fool, oh. they don't want it. Chino, XL, Mob Deep, Bad Boy, Biggie, Little Caesar, Junior Mafia, all of them is on our hit list. And I'm getting with them. I got a new clique called The Outlaws. They got an album coming out. It's some, it's some Jersey dudes keeping that East Coast flavor popping. It's some West Coast dudes, Southern dudes. It's the, the epitome of what I represent. You know what I mean? I got Big Psych from Thug Life, the solo project. We got How Do You Want It with um, Ron Hightower doing the directing with me. And we got all porno oh, got stars. We got all porno stars. I got I somebody from people yet. from the Bay. The I got Nina Harley from the Bay. Champagne. Yeah. All porno stars. It's the big time shit. Ah. Then we just did a video for America's Most Wanted, which is a classic disc video. We got a biggie. We got... We call it P.I.G. in the video and Buffy in the video I'm and Buffy. it's just dope. People gonna be talking about that video because like you know I'm one. dissing them niggas. And How Do You Want is just the dirtiest, nastiest video I've ever done. I got a Playboy version, a regular version. We got nudity, everything. It's just the most amazing video you ever see. Um, we- I'm gonna be watching that. <laughs> It has been sent to me. Um, I think the dude uh, Loki sent that to me, and I I was gonna do it on the reaction, but it it, it totally it slipped my mind as I was looking at tracks that I'd already had on the watch later, and it went until I I dropped that reaction. That someone said you're gonna do the video. I was like, yeah, I will. I will do the video on that. Um, it's gonna be a tricky one without me looking like a fucking thirteen year old boy getting excited over the video. We're doing that, we're doing a video for all eyes on me. I ain't mad at you. All about you. Oh yes. You know I got all the money in the world so we finna put it out not me personally but the record company so we definitely behind the project and we're gonna put it out then i have to get real slow i'm gonna release a home video with like ambitions as a rider and a couple of the hardcore songs that's my favorite one video. that's the one i listen to over and we're track number one on the first disc that's my that's my song. I did, did a- that's on the oh wow my tape's over there fuck um uh that's on the the double one isn't it uh ambitions as a rider ah ah i'm trying to remember the fucking one it's not can't see me what is the name? All eyes on me. Yes.
the remix for um, What's Your Phone Number, which is like I did a whole, all new lyrics. One. I took that MC Light beat that she got out, keep on yeah. moving up. Did a remix off of that. With that, it's so freaky, you will not believe it. Um, I, I did like, I got a whole new album out, ready, that I'm just holding for the soundtrack. All clean, all positive, all in the, in the, in the verge of like, uh, keep your head up, Britta's got a baby, that type of stuff, you know. Um, just to show the range I got, you know. I put keep out a hardcore double up. album, and now I'm gonna put out an introspective, like a me against the world part two, because that's what I think my fans is looking for, and I know what you're looking for, and I just want to do, as long as you supported my plan, which you have, now I'm gonna show you that I appreciate it. I'm gonna give you the album. You ain't even gotta pay a lot. Like the double album is not a lot. All them songs is not a lot. You know what I mean? It was straight love. Just to show that rappers could do whatever we want to. You want to uh, ask about like rapper forte? Oh yeah, yeah. So, damn, that's what it is. That's what. It is. That's okay. All right. Hey, yo, Pac, you work. You gave a lot of love back to um, some Bay Area artists like E40, Forte. Yeah. You know, two down, and the whole crew. Talk about what made you decide to work with them. Because I can't always be in the Bay, mm -hmm. and I know how the Bay is. The Bay is the type of people, man. If you ain't there, they're gonna talk about you. So I want them to know I love you, I feel you, I'm representing for you. So I know I got a certain amount of acclaim and everything. So I bring the Bay with me. I know E40 is what I was when I was with Digital Underground. He is the Bay right now. You know what I mean? Him and Forte. So I get them on my album and that represent the Bay. And it shows that we still all love and still all good and we, by us being the representatives, we bring the Bay where we go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And Forte, he always been raw to me. And I like the style. When I was in jail, I used to listen to his stuff. So when I got out, we clicked. We did the song. Now he in jail. And I got to do what he did for me. When I was in jail, he used to send out shout outs and say I support me and everything. Now I support Forte. Everybody pray for him and send letters and I hope brother get out of jail as soon as possible and get back to his chips because you know it's all a struggle for every young black man forte you know how it is only god can judge us all right um what are all right, we okay only god can judge us um, wait hold on let me say go, go ahead and end it all right all right was there anything else that you wanted to cover no i'm straight Okay. Yo, we've been sitting here talking with Tupac, and you know, like I said in the beginning of our conversation, I want to commend you on all your accomplishments, and not only that, the fact that you've had all these obstacles and demons that you had to deal with, but for some reason, you know, you've been blessed enough to prevail, and you know, no, no matter what y'all believe or what you hear from the media, this brother got his head together, and I have no doubt in my mind that he's always going to come out on top. And I appreciate you letting us come down here, brother. I appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity to clear all that stuff up. And, and I'm going to represent for y'all, and I'm going to always give you the opportunity to ask me whatever questions you want to ask me, whatever way you want to ask me without me tripping. And on the same token, I want y'all to always just, when I give this, you the story now, it's up uh, to you. Because you are the, our reporters. It's up to you to give it without putting me in jail through what I told you. You know what I mean? Without giving out the facts, it's up to you to let the people know what's really popping, what's right. really going on. So what we're going to do, we're going to play back what we recorded the way you said yeah, it you know so right. it'll be tupac words all right, right. all right thanks again man that's tupac right. Shakur. all right everybody stay getting their papers man okay let's knock out just these so we can use the promos right what's up this is tupac representing northern california all right okay in any way that you feel i'm ready you know these you are ready the yeah, yeah. Like what's up y'all this is the thug lord tupac be sure to check out west side radio it's going down this friday night the only station that got mad california love for y'all 106 kmel all right so let me tell you how to do this though because fire that i'm gonna play this back all right so just how you said it stuff for the shit you know what i mean right. Uh, I'm going to play it back just like you said in the morning, and I'm also going to do it on the Wake Up Show. It's a Wake Up Show playing L.A., mm -hmm. Texas, Florida, Chicago, you know, eight different cities. Oh, right? man. So that's just, that's just going to be lovely. Is there any particular, like, when we if we when we do it for, like, West Side Radio and stuff like that, is there anything, any particular songs you want us to play for West Side Radio? No, nah, not really, just as long as y'all represent the West Coast. All right. I mean, anything for you. you. Don't play you nobody. Just, nah, I'm not into that. You yeah. play whatever's pop. All right. Uh, Tupac is something else. Did you hear that? They gave him the opportunity. Anything you want to play? No. You, you, you just play whatever you represent the West Coast and he said no but like anything specific he's like no I don't play like that just just whatever's popping so we say whatever the biggest track is just just play that out you know he could have gone yeah I want this I want this I want this this is the man Sway ah oh, had an inside track you know and then it's obviously all taken away from the from him with, with that but there is a massive difference between this interview and any other one that I've listened to and I'll talk about that in just a second 
Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, it's Tupac, Machiavelli the Dawn representing Death Row. Forget what you heard. This KMEL, the only station that's truly representing for the streets. I wish I wrote that one down. Hey, uh, and I'll just say this is Tupac, you know, chilling with Sway and King Tech worldwide on the wake up show. Okay. What's up, y'all? You know how we do it. Representing that real hip hop with King Tech and Sway on the wake up show worldwide. That's mad. That's mad. Ah, oh, fuck, man. So. The difference in Tupac in that interview, being more open, being more fucking conscious of, of, no, less conscious of what he's saying and more talking from the heart and more being able to be himself. And at the end, what he's so like, you can ask me anything going forward, brother, anything you want to ask me and I will answer because I, I'm happy that you're going to put out exactly what's coming out of my mouth and it's not going to be twisted in any way. That was not said on any other fucking interview that I've heard so, so far. Not even mentioned. And this is my point. This man fucking knows. But I think this interview would have raised a fuck ton of eyebrows. And I need to know where this fits in. Um, on, on It can't be too long. 96. When did he get shot? I don't know. I don't know when he got shot. I can't. Well, I've been told, but I don't I don't know right now sitting here what the fucking actual date was. Um, but I just think that this would have raised a fuck ton of eyebrows and a lot of people would have been listening from a business mindset. And P. Diddy, I'm telling you now, man, I'm telling you now, it was fucking you. It was you. I don't give a fuck. It was 100% you, mate, that had some influence over him getting shot because you knew he was coming to the East Coast to fucking mop up. You were nothing to him. Nothing. Biggie couldn't even fucking put a candle to this dude. There was nothing that they could do. He had you up against the ropes and never stopped punching your fucking heads in. And that's the part that you didn't like. It's fucking obvious now. Ah, uh, let me know what you think about that. My, my hour or so is up. Uh, Tupac KMEL 1996 interview with Sway. I gotta say that Sway is one of the greatest interviewers that I've heard so far with Tupac. And in general, I've seen him interview other people. I, I love his radio show. I think he's an absolute amazing, uh, uh, charismatic interviewer that's just so honest you know and i just think that's amazing to, to have someone like that and i can see why he's so fucking successful why he's so successful and i can do if i can do half of that half of that on any interviews or discussions that i get to have in in the near future um i'd be fucking well happy well happy comment section let me know if you made it this far let me know if you made it to the end i love reading the ones that actually bothered to make it till the end p diddy cream puff I fucking know, mate. I fucking know. Eminem knew. Ah, there was so much on there, bro. There's so much. You just gotta fucking listen. Ah. Oh.